Saturday night shall, shall see action for the first time this season at the Arun Jaitley Stadium in Delhi. Delhi play their first actual home game. Remember, they played their two home games in Vizag. This time they're up against... Uh, the big batting team Hyderabad, both these teams coming off wins. Uh, DC, two convincing wins against uh, Lucknow and Gujarat. They got Gujarat all out for 89. It looked like an easy win. Things starting to fall in place for DC slowly. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure Heinrich Klaassen has been to Delhi before. But if Heinrich Klaassen goes to the Kotla just to see how big the boundaries are, <laughs> oh. might look and say, is that it? Yeah. Is it just there? <laughs> the boundary is just there. I remember one day, one of the IPL games, they're not playing on the centre pitch, they're playing one of the side pitches. Yeah. And Harbhajan came out and he just looked at this and he just walked off because you're one of the side pitches. So I promise you, it must have been just about 50, 51 metres that side. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a small ground and these days you never get those sticky Delhi wickets that you used to get yeah. before. Yeah. So, miss hit for fun. Let's talk about the positives for Delhi. Pant and Stubbs uh, among yes. the runs. Khalil is bowling really well. He's bowled a couple of maiden overs already. Mukesh Kumar is there and so is uh, Young Ishan. Except runs from Aksar. Now, that is that an area of concern? Should that worry you? Or do you say, let the primary batters do the batting? Yeah, the primary batters should be getting those. I mean, Aksar's contributions over the years have been significant and, yep. and, and quite reliable. And... Uh, but he's he's primarily there with ball in hand, particularly if it is a dry yeah. Delhi pitch. If it does grip and you know if it's if it's still tied from the traffic it's had on it. But there, I mean that's a that was a, a nicely balanced squad in the last game, wasn't it? It was. Uh, it, it, I mean, t don't worry about uh, Clarkson seeing short boundaries there. What about Jake Fraser McGurk? He's he's going to be pretty happy with walking out and seeing that too. But uh, changes to the team. I, if well, Warner's fit, what do you Warner's the... He walks in. The one, yeah, comes sure straight back in, in obviously. For and maybe. For Shea Hope? Maybe for Shea Hope, if, if he walks in. Because young, the, the young Aussie kid has is, is shown that he can... If he bats 20 balls, 25 balls, he can turn a game yeah. around. But Warner has to come in. But I, I, do, I don't know how good his finger is. Yeah. Because remember, Warner also has an international swan song coming up, I think. Yep. So, he's got to be a little careful not to jeopardize They played with that. three foreigners in that last game. As you can see, Stubbs, JFM and uh, Mitchell Marsh has, of course, flown back no, home. And, and Shea Hope. Shea Hope and is and there, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 yeah, So, those are the three they played with. At so, some point, they've got to come back to Nokia because he's too good a player just to... I mean, he had, a, he had a horrible start to the season. But you give quality players a chance to come back into the season. Right, SRH, uh, to the surprise of a lot of people, have uh, had some flavour about them. Uh, SRH... Uh, in, my, in Hyderabad, everything has flavour. Yeah. Ah, of course. They will not the have one... Whatever else you might accuse them of, they're never <laughs> short on flavour. Now, you and I did the auction yeah. show and the oh. one conversation that we had about them is who are the foreign players that they'll pick? The others will roam around the city, exploring the yes. sights and sounds of Hyderabad. Have they, for you, Cracked that code? Have they figured that combo? They've shown a lot of faith in uh, in Aidan Markram, who's a yep. quality player, but yep. they've shown a lot of faith in Aidan Markram. Yep. Our, our thinking was that if one of Tripathi or Mayank Agarwal got going, that that would give them a little more flexibility with maybe a Marco Janssen or someone like that coming in at, at the back end. But they've shown faith in him. And in all fairness, neither uh, Tripathi nor Agarwal in the few chances they have have set the tournament alight. Yep. So I think they'll keep going with this with this format. Yeah. They had class in batting at three the other day, yeah. which was a welcome surprise given that the openers had batted for a while. 287 in that last game. But the other problem for SRH is that they've been conceding 200 plus, very close to 250. In fact, 262 in that last oh. game. Twice they've conceded 200 plus in six games. Is yes, That's yeah. a huge, huge area of concern, Gilly. But uh, in both those big scoring games, they've won both of them, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they've conceded 200 plus thrice, of yeah. which they won two. Oh, one, they lost two. to KKR. Oh, KK, yeah, sorry, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that tells me you've taken, if you're scoring huge scores and conceding pretty huge scores that they're still less than your score, <laughs> no need to panic. Yeah, it's like if you're earning a lot of money, you can maybe spend a lot of money. Is it that simple? I mean, or well, if you're paying a lot of tax, <laughs> means you're earning a lot of money. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, uh, a bit like what we spoke about tonight, LSG. It was a very good bowling performance, but there's that little area at the end that they've got something to learn from. Generally, SRH are playing some really nice all-round cricket, but the bowling, there's components in the bowling that they'll want to want to just address and and analyse. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple of 
couple of those games that were just sort of off the chart. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be panicking about that. I think it looks like a pretty happy, balanced team, squad, well led, uh, all unified. So I don't think they're going to make any big changes. They need, yeah. they need a Natrajan kind of bowler to do well at the death because that's been a big issue for them because they've had to bowl Bhuvi at the death. And, and these balls are sort of straight line balls. These balls don't like curving. Yeah. If they curve at all, they curve in the first couple of overs. By the time you come to the dead, they're absolutely straight. And that's not Bhuvi's strength. So they want to finish Bhuvi early. So they've got to find someone at the death. Now, in, in is... both those games, they had Unatkat and Bhuvneshwar Kumar bowling the last two overs. Yeah. So maybe the best bowler this year is Pat Cummins. And Cummins sort of bowls out 7-16, 17, 17, 18. Yeah. Maybe, and that's a tough ask, maybe Cummins should come back and bowl at the death and finish either Bhuvi or Unatkat earlier. Or they've got to find someone to bowl at the death. Maybe Cummins and Natarajan at the death might be a better option. Why doesn't Pat Cummins open the bowling? He doesn't bowl in the power play. He should. Yeah. He bowls an over. I, I think he always bowls one in the no, power play. He's mostly the seventh, I think. No, no, he's, 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 ch he's chopped and changed it, I think, which is um, not a bad... You know, it keeps opposition guessing a little bit. Yeah. But Boovey's going to bowl, obviously, the first over and try and get that swinging around. So, Pat, I think in one of the games he certainly did... Bowl the second over, like yeah. open from the other end. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a good call. I think he can afford to take shoulder some responsibility at the back end because yeah. it clearly hasn't quite yeah. worked. Uh, the other area of con concern that we've known about for a while, and it'll be interesting to see if it costs them at any stage, whether it's tomorrow night or later in the back half of the tournament, the spin mm. or lack of you know that quality spin yeah. Yeah. spinner. Yeah, it hasn't worked with Mank Mark and Day this year. Yeah. Also, don't forget there've been those wickets in Hyderabad. The, those those wickets are designed to break hearts. <laughs> Where is Washington Sundar? It is something that I hope Rahul mm. Dravid is sending a note to the Sunrisers management about saying, I want to see Washington Sundar bowl. They played him in one game as a sub. Impact sub, yes. As an impact sub. Because the moment you get Washington, his, his big strength is that he can give you two overs in the power play. Yeah. Mm. And as we saw when India were in New Zealand a cup year, year and a bit ago, he, he can hit some big shots right at the end. He, yeah. he did that in a couple of games in New Zealand playing for India. Yeah. So I'd like them to see find a role for, for Washington Sundar. Yeah. The role that they've given to Abdul Samad, I can understand. But maybe a Washington coming in around there and being ready to bowl two overs in the in the power play. Another game for Unarkat or would you look at the 21-year-old uh, Akash Maharaj Singh from Rajasthan? He's a left-arm pacer. Yeah, we saw him. Maybe add a bit of a bit of him last year. Yeah. Yeah, I think if the track even grips a little bit, then Unarkat becomes a very, very good bowler. Yeah. So, if it grips a little bit, Unatkat. But you've always got to ask yourself, is Akash Singh going to give us more than what Unatkat is giving us? And that's always a tricky question. That's that's not something we from a distance can have a comment about. Yes, Akash Maharaj Singh, 21-year-old, bo born in uh, Bharatpur, Rajasthan, as per the Crick Buzz app. So the Under-19 World Cup, didn't he? A couple of years ago. Yeah, Under-19, yeah. yes. Right, so that's that. Uh, but we've got to have uh, players to watch out for. DC and ASRH, one each. Really looking forward to seeing how cool deep goes on that postage stamp size ground. Um, yeah, what what he does and and what you know his tricks and all the variations. If he can come into play, how much courage he has to sort of throw it up there and yeah. Uh, but he looks like he's in a really nice groove, groove a nice rhythm at the moment. So looking forward to seeing him go about his business for DC and from from uh, the Sunrisers. Uh, let me think. Uh, uh, well, yeah, Pat Cummins. Yeah, let's let's see if he can be the solution to that that closing phase with ball in hand. Yeah. I always like Heinrich Klaassen, man. I think he's I think he's just playing a different level, and I like the fact that they're not only using him as a finisher. But I'm so happy you asked that question first to Gilly because I'm going to pinch the answer from Gilly about uh, <laughs> Kuldeep. about Kuldeep. Yeah, it'll be a real challenge on that slow deck or on that small deck. So, very interesting to see how he goes about it.